What's up, everybody? My name is Bart Farrell, and I am the talent manager here at V Global Bilbao. And are you tired of watching your money disappear into the cloud? Are you sick of seeing your hard-earned cash get burned up in virtual machines? Are you exhausted of having to give explanations to your boss about why cloud infrastructure is dragging your company's finances down further and further? Well, if you are, then get ready for some cost-busting, action-packed, Jedi-level knowledge from my main man, the big boss of cost reduction, Ari van den Bos. Ari? Thanks for that enthusiastic uh, introduction, Bart. My pleasure. So I'll be talking about our cost reduction project that we've been running at, uh, at VA for a year now. Uh, I'm going to show you how we optimize our cloud with this and how we save up to 60% of our cloud costs. It's amazing! So keep on watching and we'll tell you in a sec. Get ready! Okay, so we're talking about cloud cost reduction. Um, as, I, as I told you before, I also like to call it cloud optimization because it's more an optimization process what you're going to be doing more than, um, than cost reduction. Um, the good part is that they overlap a lot, so at the end you will save a lot of cost, but at the end for the ops engineer or the DevOps or however you call it, it's going to be super handy to have this optimization uh, implemented because his environment will be a lot cleaner, he will have a lot more control uh, and it's going to be a lot more easier to, to generate reports uh, about, your, uh, about your infrastructure. Uh, so like at many other companies, we started to, uh, to migrate our infrastructure from, um, from a local infrastructure, data center to, uh, to the cloud, um, and with that, a lot of changes came. So let's move on to the next slide and I will show you everything. So um, we're going to talk about the following points about right sizing Azure resources, insights and tagging, how to shut down of the VMs cleanup, optimization, auto-scaling, company awareness, which is the only non-technical point actually, um, but uh, very important also, and we will show the result that we got as uh, vGlobal. So, uh, right-sizing. Right-sizing is a good way to, to reduce your costs. Um, Microsoft gives you the opportunity to uh, to change between sizes. The good part is that they also introduce new sizes every now and then, uh, which have uh, new hardware running on them. Uh, if you take the example of a virtual machine, for example, they have a virtual machine with an older processor, then they will make sure that uh, every now and then they update, they upgrade their, their processors and they give you a new generation process processor. So what do you get, for example? For example, you have the D series, and nowadays you also have the DV2 series and the DV3 series. So the change between them, the difference between them is that they are um, a lot better in the sense of uh, with the processors. I believe that the performance increase of the CPU can go up to 35%, which is enormous and really handy for, uh, for process related uh, services that you have running. And in some cases also the RAM memory is being, being upgraded. And that normally against lower pricing. So that's really interesting, of course. So you spend less, but you get more uh, performance in that sense. So as you can see here in my, uh, on my slide also, you also have the Microsoft Azure calculator, which is really handy to see uh, what series there are on the market nowadays. Um, yeah, they update it every now and then. And it's also really good, this tool, to see what you will be spending. For example, for new projects, um, you can estimate a little bit what you will be spending or what you need uh, in the sense of how many CPUs will I need, how, many, uh, how, ma how much RAM memory do I need, what kind of disk do I need, do I need a managed disk or a normal disk, do I need premium or standard? So you can check that here, you can put the amount of machines and you can calculate and, and run your project, uh, set up your project like that. So that will be really, uh, that's a really handy tool that we use a lot. So to go move on to the next slide, insights and tagging. Uh, insights and tagging, um, yeah, it already says it, insights. Uh, we, when I say this word, I think about reporting, uh, get more information from about your infrastructure. Um, when moving to the cloud, 
normally what we use is uh, for example what we used to use was powershell and we still use it of course a lot in scripts but to also to get information related to the cost and related to the tagging and related to the sizes and the cores but nowadays uh, we use uh, for example what we use is cloud health it's uh, a cloud management tool we've been testing and trying other uh, uh, providers also but for us cloud health at the moment was the the one that fulfilled all our needs and it gives you the opportunity to set up reports uh, you can do uh, periodical reports you can set up alerts for in case your uh, cloud costs go too high then they will send you an email and they say hey your uh, in your cloud uh, costs have increased yesterday by 10 percent you get an email and you can check in detail what has increased um, to take action of course so um, yeah, what we use it a lot actually nowadays. We have everything set up also to work with tags, as I as I put uh, as I'm putting in the in the down part here, the tagging. So we tagged all our resources in Azure uh, with the team tag and the department tag. Of course, we also have some other tags, but they're not uh, related to to this presentation. Um, why is this handy? Uh, why do you set a team tag, for example, on all your resources? This just to know which team is responsible for which resource. And of course, to keep up with the uh, cost that each team is making. So maybe a team, uh, two teams are using the same technologies, but one team is spending 100 euros and the other 50. Then it's handy that they start uh, uh, to discuss this a little bit between them to see what one is doing different than the other or what the reasons might be so that you can um, decrease the cost there also. Um, this we also use for the right sizing part to keep track on which teams um, right sized or changed the sizes already to the V2 series when we made the change from the D series, the normal D series to the DV2 series. Uh, yeah, for this we also used Cloud Health because Cloud Health can also handle the tags. Uh, you can create perspectives. Uh, perspective is like a filter so you filter your cost based on a perspective and you say give me all the costs or all the uh, all the vms that team a is using and their series for example and if you see that they are still using 100 uh, version 1 machines then you can tell them hey listen uh, team a you should use uh, the v2 ones and like this you can keep track of your uh, of your infrastructure so uh, cloud health there are also other tools on the market, but um, yeah, really handy to, to get one or at least to, to have a look at it. So let's move on. Auto shutdown of the VMs. Um, we've also implemented for our testing environments uh, the auto shutdown. What this does is um, we have tagged all our machines, our VMs in the, in the testing environments with a tag that's called auto shutdown. And there we define the time that the machine needs to stop and when the machine needs to start. So we have this running in a web job, which I'm going to talk to you about in a second. But you can also do it with run books, which work at the end in the same uh, in the same way. So you go to the portal of Azure, you go to uh, to the run books, and there you have the run book gallery, and there you can find uh, start and stop VMs, uh, run books already programmed and predefined. The only thing is you need to configure them to say like, hey, I want it based on the tags, I want it based on a resource group, or I want it based, for example, uh, on a group of machines. So, no, what we are using is uh, we're using a web job which is running in a web app, so in, a, in app services. Um, this uh, web job is running every 30 minutes and it checks every 30 minutes which machines uh, apply uh, apply on the rule. So if a machine has the time set on six o'clock, uh, for example on 1800 and the web job starts running at on six at six o'clock and it sees hey this machine needs to be shut down right now so we'll shut it down and the only thing is that we have changed now in, in our own script is that everything goes parallel so we're not doing one by one because we noticed that doing it one by one um, and we have a lot of machines when you have 50 machines that need to shut down at six for example that the last machine was shut down at uh, like at eight o'clock instead of six o'clock so two hours later this is because of when it goes by PowerShell, um, yeah, it takes it one by one and it takes a while before one machine sends the message that it's deallocated. Remember, you need to deallocate your machine because the machine stopped does not save money, but a deallocated machine does save money. So that's what we are uh, using based on the tag. So it checks the tag, 
and it stops the machine in the morning it checks again and it says oh it's seven o'clock i need to start the machine because in an hour the guys come uh, come to the office so we want to have everything up and running this by the way we uh, we give the the control to the teams themselves over the testing uh, machines because uh, in some cases you have teams that say hey i uh, we like to work till seven o'clock and come in a bit later and the others the other way around but also with the international uh, uh, part of this there are teams that work uh, in a different time zone so some machines can only be shut down four hours and others can be shut down for a longer uh, period